Ho, ho, ho. Happy Christmas sharing in the time of COVID. My name is Dan Harms. I'm all alone in this room, so I don't need that mask. It's good to be with you. Uh, I want to give you some information about what Christmas sharing is. Christmas sharing is a program that we've been doing here at St. Bridget for over 20 years. And the goal of Christmas sharing is to make uh, those in need make their Christmas a little bit brighter. Uh, and so it's not providing a full-blown Christmas for every single family, uh, but it is offering a few small gifts, uh, some toiletries, and some food items to families in need. Now, in normal years, we will serve up to about 200 families uh, or more, depending on the year, which is tremendous. That's a huge, huge number. Almost 1,000 people will end up with, with some kind of benefit from the work of Christmas sharing. This year, because of COVID, we're drawing the numbers down a little bit. We have, we're aiming at about 170 families. Uh, and here's how we come to understand who those families are. The families come to us through social agencies primarily. We work with four primary social agencies. Each one of these agencies, uh, they might be in um, out in the mountains. They might be here in Metro Richmond. But each one of these agencies identifies you know, up to about 30 families that are in serious need. Uh, and in order for them to qualify, the agencies have to kind of hand select each one of these families. Uh, what we do is we send the agencies a list of all of uh, the things that we do and do not provide. Um, and so this year in particular, we've been really clear and, and a little bit more forceful about the fact that we do not provide luxury goods for, especially for adults. We don't provide name brand or luxury goods um, for adults. If you're a kid and you really want a pair of Nike shoes, We'll allow that uh, because a 14-year-old who really wants Nike shoes is different than a 35-year-old who wants Nike shoes. Um, and so what we do is is we use these agencies to vet and select the families. Uh, we have sent all the agencies forms. And basically what they do is they'll distribute those forms to their different families. The families will fill out for each individual in the family. They'll fill out all the information of what they're requesting, their sizes, uh, a number of different ideas for different gifts that they would like. Uh, we have spots for them to submit five different gift requests. And we tell them that we will try to fulfill two of those, uh, two of those gift requests. Some people will get more. Some people will get fewer. It just depends on the person, but that's kind of the aim and the goal. The other thing we tell families is, is not to expect anything kind of cumulatively to, to add up to over $100 in value. Now, there are certainly parishioners who get a list of different items that a person has requested, and they will spend way more than $100 per person. And that's beautiful and great. But generally what we try and do is, is keep everybody to a similar realm. So that way, if within one family there are five people and they get adopted by you know three or five different members of the St. Bridget community, um, what they receive on the other end of Christmas sharing will be somewhat similar across all five of them instead of one kid getting a mountain of presents and the other kids getting just a couple. Uh, for Christmas sharing, the help that I need is this. Um, number one, when all of the, the physical forms come in, they have to be digitized. They have to be taken and entered into a database. Um, so that way we can create cards. And, and there's a whole bunch of, of stuff that we use that information and that data for. So the digitization of handwritten data is a big evolution. Uh, years past, I've always handed this off to teenagers because they're pretty good at cranking out data entry stuff. Uh, and I may still do that this year, but that's one of the tasks that will need to be accomplished. And that will be happening in uh, the second week of November. We will then take all of those cards and this year we'll be putting them all online. And we're working at setting up actually like a storefront. It would be almost like a store, but everything is free. Where parishioners can go in and they can see exactly what inventory we have as far as the individuals or the families that are requesting gifts and food and toiletries. And then they can choose and put into a cart all of the people that they want to adopt. They would then check out. We would have a record of who has adopted those specific people and those specific cards or those specific people would come out of our big pool of however many um, people we'll have. Let's see, 170 times four, three and four, like uh, many, many, many people. Um, then we will, about a week before Christmas sharing drop-off happens, and Christmas sharing drop-off is set to happen on December 12th, uh, about a week before that happens, we will start collecting gifts in trailers 
out uh, on the, the roads around St. Bridget. So we need to work through the logistics of exactly how that will work, whose trailers we can use, once we fill up a trailer, where we're gonna store it, and how to secure the trailers overnight and whatnot. Um, but that's the idea, is because people can't be coming into the church to drop things off, and we can't be accumulating things here in the commons, uh, just for COVID policies and a, a bunch of different reasons, we're gonna be collecting things in trailers. Um, I'm going to need volunteers to go and man those trailers uh, in that week before December 12th um, in the evening. So maybe we'll have a two-hour window between, uh, I don't know, 6 and 8 p.m. or 5 and 7 p.m., whatever, when people can drop off their gifts early. It's very helpful to parishioners because it gives them some flexibility on when they drop off their gifts. It's also really helpful for us because it's a lot less to do on the final day of Christmas sharing drop-off. The final day can be really crazy. In the past, for years and years, it was the only day that we allowed people to drop off gifts, which was kind of insane. And so from starting at 6 a.m., until about 10 a.m., we would just have a nonstop line of cars dropping off gifts. We will still have a steady stream of cars dropping off gifts on Christmas uh, drop-off day, so on December 12th. And we will be collecting those gifts, and we will be putting them into Mother Presentation Hall, which is the gymnasium owned by the school. Um, once they're there, the gifts will be checked in, and they will be inventoried and sorted by family um, and, dis and sorted out by agency. So that way, when the agencies come at around 11 a.m., uh, we can start loading all of those gifts into the agency's trucks. They bring U-Haul trucks and whatnot, and then we will load the gifts in. So in years previous, we've always used confirmation teens for all of this work. And confirmation teens are great because they're teens, and you can just be like, hey, go lift something. And then they generally do it for a little while, and then they get distracted. Um, but this year, a couple things have changed. One, um, a service project is no longer a requirement by the diocese for confirmation. So I can't really force a bunch of confirmation teens to come and, and provide manual labor for this event. Number two, because it's COVID, uh, we don't really want 50 teens in MPH all milling around and touching everything. Um, really what we're looking for is, and we're trying to work on final numbers for this, but probably about 20 to 25 people. Um, and I think with that amount of people, young adults, adults, whatever, uh, with that number of people, we can get all of the gifts sorted, we can get them all checked in, um, and we can get all of the gifts that are dropped off brought in and loaded into the into MPH and then ready to be turned around and sent back out. Um, Drop-off day is a fun day. It's a long day. It's at least 6 a.m. Uh, until about 12.30 uh, or 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But it is a beautiful day. It's an amazing day to watch the generosity of St. Bridget all come into MPH, um, to go through the process of organizing and sorting all the gifts and troubleshooting and figuring stuff out is, is really just kind of a ton of fun. And then at the end of the day, we take all those gifts and we load them up into trucks and we send all of these agencies and families home um, with Christmas, with a Christmas gift. It's a really, really beautiful thing. And, and so the mission of St. Bridget and the mission of Christmas sharing is just to make Christmas a little brighter for those in need. And that's exactly what we're looking to do. So I am looking for volunteers. I am looking for uh, whomever, just people who are able-bodied and, and willing to, to come and um, respect social distancing, uh, wear masks, especially when we're indoors and, and interacting with people, um, and, and get this project accomplished. It's a huge evolution, but it's really beautiful. So thank you very much for your consideration and for thinking about what Christmas sharing um, is and, and how you can help, and I would love to get your help moving forward. God bless you, and uh, thank you for your prayers.